What's up, everybody? I'm blessed and free. Welcome back to another episode of DOC TV. So if you guys are tuning in for the first time, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button on this channel. We talk about jail, prison, criminal justice, and the corruption within all of those. I got a today's guest. Uh, he's been on a couple other YouTube channels. He's got a crazy story. Um, definitely living like that when he was in prison. So we're going to tap in and, and get into his story today. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, man? Uh, what's your name and where you're from? What's up, everybody? Uh, my name's Eric Costo. Everybody calls me Cuzzo, and I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. All right, PA. So, uh, all right, man. Well, what was life like for you growing up in PA, man? Uh, I actually had two lives. Okay. I had, <laughs> I had a life that was one way with my dad. I'd go to my mom's and be a completely different person in another life. My dad had bread. My dad had money. Uh, he got some of it illegally. But he was well off. My mom was was poor and struggling. And I usually chose to be with my mom just because I wanted to be there to help her because she ain't she ain't have no one else looking out for her. Yeah. And uh, my dad, I never met him until I was like seven years old. The guy my mom was married to from when I was born until then she had him thinking I was his son and I thought that was my dad. I had a different last name. My first last name was Eric Ellison. When, All right. they, had, when they had this divorce, you know, my mom was like, you know, he probably ain't even yours. And, and it turned out I wasn't. And then my real dad, when he found out, because they all knew each other, they all grew up together. When he found out, uh, he had a lot of pool in our area and he was able to get custody of me and change my last name and take me from my mom. All right. When did, uh, when did you start getting in trouble with, you know, getting arrested and everything? What age was that? Uh, first time I ever got arrested, I was 14, I think. Like some uh, minor I, shit or was it some big stuff? Yeah, it, it was always... I would go, I knew how to play the system. And anytime I got booked, I would use the mental health suicide shit because I was <laughs> a underage. The older, the older dudes in my area put me on to it. And I would just go to a psych ward for adolescents for a couple weeks. They let me go. Yeah. And I would go back with, you know, my mom or my dad. So when you were on the streets, man, were you into the, like, were you into the drug game, the Robin game? Like, where were you getting your money from? I was into everything when I was real young. Just anything that I could do. Sometimes just did shit for the fun of it. But I got into selling drugs. As soon as I hit high school, I took it seriously. That's what fucked my whole life up. What were you uh what were you selling when you were in high heroin. school? Heroin. Heroin? Yeah. Heroin. Heroin's big up in PA, huh? Real big. Yeah. And uh if you can get it in Pittsburgh, all the outside surrounding areas back then you could sell it for twice as much all day long. And where did you, uh, like, were you doing it or were you just selling it at that point? I started off popping perks. And then I started eating oxys and snorting Oxycontin. Uh, yeah. I always had family in Florida. So back then I was getting Xanax and oxys and all. My cousin could get pills whenever down there. For some reason, you guys have, like, Bro, you can I already get know. Pills. You can yeah. get pills in Florida for the low. Yeah, and then you bring them up to PA and you're selling them for a dollar a milligram. Yep, exactly. Yeah. I know all about that, bro. I was into the whole pill game way back in the day when that shit was popping, the doctor shopping, all that shit. Yeah. 
So yeah. when did you catch a charge that finally like sent you to prison? Okay, so I barely got caught for shit. It seemed like as soon as I turned 18, I started getting caught for everything. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny how that works, dog. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the first arrest I had was this dude owed me money. And the girl I was with at the time put me on to him. He is playing games. She tells me where he lives. I have no idea this is his parents. He lives with his parents. So I go to the door and I'm banging on it and I'm yeah, like getting my fucking bread. Uh, dude's parents call the cops. The cops show up before, I, like they live not far from the police station. They show up, they arrest me and I have all these uh, Percocets in the car and I had uh, an old school flapjack one hit and dudes knocked out it's like yeah. a metal ball yeah with a spring I had that so I got an unlawful weapons charge uh, possession with intent to deliver and distribute because of how many pills I had and uh, I got a rain but because this was my first adult charge they gave me drug court Yep. And they let me, they gave me an OR. I didn't even have to pay a bond. They just, I was in and out. My car gets impounded. So I got to go to the police impound. Now, when my girl picks me up, I eat like 10 Xanax, the blues. When I'm on Xanax, I like stealing shit. I like taking, I, I think I could <laughs> get away with stealing anything. I'm my tired, I already know, bro. <laughs> My dumbass goes to the police impound and I'm sitting in the office and the lady takes my money and puts it in a metal lock box. But I noticed she didn't turn the key. She's going to get my car keys. As soon as she leaves without even thinking my dumb, I opened the joint. I took all the money. I stuffed it and I sat there and waited for her to come back with my keys. I didn't see there was a little camera in the corner of, of the office behind a plant. Damn. The cops fucked me up. They came up from behind me. I'm sitting on a joint, like not even realizing. They <laughs> grabbed me, slammed me off the chair, beat my ass. And I ended up going in front of the same fucking judge a couple hours later who just let me out on OR. Damn, dog. It could be raining pussies and you get hit in the head with a dick. Yeah. <laughs> That's some bad luck right there, homie. <laughs> so I, I, I'm like, listen, I got high as soon as I left. I didn't know what I was doing. She's like, yeah, $10,000 bond. Damn. I got unlawful theft, some all that disorderly conduct shit. I think I got charged something for them fucking me up because I didn't hit one of them. Yeah, like disorderly, uh, obey, disobeying arrest or some I shit like that. If you, on Google, if you Google my name, all that shit's on there. But yeah. I, can't, I can't remember that shit. So now you're in jail on a $10,000 bond. Do you sit in this jail? This is my first time ever making it upstairs. Into the adult jail? Yeah, I'm in all Pittsburgh, right. AC Jet. What's jail like in PA? Like, what did you go through when you went upstairs? So, Pittsburgh was bad. My other jail, county jail that I go to, Beaver County Jail, it's rough in there, but ACJ, dudes are getting smoked in there. You're getting killed. Damn. And dudes were getting killed over the dumb as shit now it wasn't happening all the time but it was happening enough where like you gotta be worried yeah you gotta be on your p's and q's beaver county jail that's where my dad is from and that's where i grew up mostly i was only going into pittsburgh when i started hustling because i started getting heroin from crips and i wasn't a crip yet I was just right. hitting licks with them sometimes and getting work with them. I feel you. So when when did you become affiliated? When I caught my homicide and got in the county, dudes were watching me heavy. 
All right, let's back up a little bit, though. So you just said you caught a homicide. What happened with that case? Okay, so I ended up bonding out for the $10,000 joint. I'm being, uh, what's that? Watched. Say? Controlled buys when they send people at you to buy drugs from you. and then Yeah, they they're trying to set you up. So the, the state police attorney generals are buying heroin from me and my girl. I don't know this. I find out because one of the days I'm going to sell. Now, the person I was going to sell to was not an informant. But these two people are planning on robbing me. The one dude that I'm supposed to meet up with, he tells a dude that fronted me a gun to take to Pittsburgh to sell for him. He told me it was a 38. It ended up being a 32, so I got less for it. He dope sick a couple days later and now he wants more for it so I'm, i grew up with him i'm like bro like you're on some fiend shit like go hit a lick <laughs> i hung up <laughs> well <laughs> well the dude that i'm supposed to meet at wendy's wendy's fast food restaurant parking lot he tells this dude i'm gonna be down there he like bro i'm a robber because i'm a little dude and i wasn't the shit that I was doing in Pittsburgh, I wasn't getting into in Aliquippa, Beaver County. I was hitting licks, robbing, and, and hustling. But in Pittsburgh, them dudes, the Crips I was hanging out with, they was on, like, missions and shit. And they was teaching me a whole new lifestyle. Yeah. With, with, I never seen big money like that. I never seen big weight like that. This is the first time that I'm seeing all this shit. And these dudes don't move like the other dudes that I was around. They, they don't talk about shit. Like you do something with, they're not bragging about it. They're not telling nobody. Yeah. They're real gangsters. I felt safe with them. Yeah. Everything that they was teaching me. I'm like, they know what they're doing. Yeah, you could just tell you're soaking that shit up. And and I, I just, as a kid, I've always been into the mob movie. I'm Italian. I, I got family over in Italy. I used to go there. I was obsessed with all the Godfathers and Goodfellas and shit. My dad would watch that shit over and over and over again. So I was really intrigued with that lifestyle. And I liked that, like, my dad was big into the, the gambling and shit and, and loaning people money. I looked up to that, but he, you know, he hated me on the low. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I looked up to him, but he would fuck with me, beat my ass. Like, he was an asshole. And he let it be known, like, he didn't like me. <laughs> so, he, so he just didn't like the shit you were doing, probably, right? Yeah, but... He was doing the same shit, and I knew it. He was on some hip hypocrite shit. Yeah. Like, a couple of times, like, I was selling coke for a little bit. He takes my shit. He finds it in my room and takes it. Well, I get in his room, and I end up finding the shit. Like, you taking my shit, and you keeping it. Yeah, that's great, dog. Stored up. Like, how is that? Like, most parents take that shit, flush it, give you a lecture. He yeah. takes it, don't say nothing to me, and he's snorting it. <laughs> so what happened with the homicide then? Did that have something to do with your dad, or is that with the Crips you're talking about? This had nothing to do with nothing but a childhood friend who was, who was dope sick and thought that I would give this shit up because we were at Wendy's, and it was a, a fast food restaurant, and there was a bunch of people around. But he was fucking choking me. Like, bro, we fought. He ripped. Okay, so this all happened. There are a few cars down parked at Wendy's. I'm in the driver's seat of my car, and my girl's in the passenger seat. I just got done smoking a blunt, and the door, oh, I'm not even paying attention, bro. I was leaning back listening to music, waiting for this dude, Allen. My door opens. I get gripped right out the car, bro like thrown out. I hit the ground. He gets on top of me. He hits me a couple times, but I was able to scoop his ankle and then roll with it. Once he hit the ground, I get up and I'm running to the car because my gun 
is in between the center console and my driver's seat. It's stuff right there. All right. Now, on some real shit, I was not planning to shoot him. I grew up with this dude. His mom and my mom grew up together. We're best friends. Like, I've known him since I was a baby. He just got strung out and chose to steal from family members and do weird shit for money. And I dealt drugs. I was still a fiend, though. I just didn't realize it at the time. I yeah. had nice clothes and a, and a whip. And, and you know what I mean? I'm not begging for, like, so I thought I didn't have a problem, but I did. Because... Just like what he was doing, I was doing the same shit. But when he started choking me, I couldn't fucking breathe. And when I pointed the gun at him, just trying to scare him. So when you he, ran he went harder. When you ran back to the car after you got his ankle, he jumped you're, right on my back. All right. So you're in the car, you get you grab the heat, and then now he jumped on you and he's choking you out. Oh yeah, we're like I when I got it, I'm rolling now. Now he's directly on top of me. Yeah. So I put it up right under his chin at first to warn him. Yeah, like, get the fuck that. off me. Yeah. As soon as I did that, bro, he grabbed my windpipe and squeezed that shit hard as fuck. And I blacked out. Like, I mean, I ain't really black out, but I got pissed as fuck. And I put it in his chest and I shot him. And Damn. then I threw him off me. And I got up. He gets up and like, you could tell at first he was just in shock. Yeah, then, I bet. <laughs> but then like right away, he realized and now he's like, you shot me. You shot. And then all these people's in the parking lot and they're screaming and running. Like, it's just. Damn, bro. And then my adrenaline's going crazy because I'm like, why the fuck did he make me do that shit? Did he fall out eventually? Now, listen, he he dips. I dip. We both, like, when we realized what's really all these people yeah. staring at us. Yeah, you you went both different ways. Yeah, he gets in his car, I get in my car. Now, this shit is all, there's cameras all over this parking lot. So, I back up. I go forward. I see his lights like he's about to back up. Even though I just shot him, I beat the horn and stuck my hand out like, come on, follow me. I wanted him to get out of there. But I go out first. Now, he is actually in the driver's seat. Other dude was so scared, and he didn't even get shot. The other dude's so scared, he's just like, so he's driving. He only made it like 20, 30 feet and went. He like, went out. He didn't die right then. So he went unconscious as he was trying to get away from, from there? Loss, from blood loss. Damn. He was trying to leave the parking lot. He couldn't make it out of the parking lot either. And you're watching this, what, in your rear view? I can see the car drifting. I don't know. I'm I'm going like, <laughs> I'm going you're, fast. Yeah, fast you're out of there. Yeah, all I'm thinking is I got to get rid of this uh, gun. Yeah. Like, I can't, like, that's all I'm thinking. That's all. I got to get rid of this gun and get out of here. Uh, But my girl, she was, like, in shock, too. She's not talking or nothing. And I'm yelling at her, like, wipe the gun down. Wipe the gun down. She ain't fucking moving. So now I'm driving with my knee, with my T-shirt, wiping this gun down because I'm about to go to this spot where there's a little, like, uh, like, uh, What's that like shit a, called? A river? <laughs> no, it's like a river, but a reservoir. All right. A reservoir. I'm going to throw the gun in there. I do it, but the gun did not fucking make it in the water. It's like <laughs> oh, a shit. clip. It's, it's like a clip. On some real shit, it didn't even matter because everybody, there was tons of witnesses that knew me. Yeah. And then May Man, the other dude, told. They got the dude that I shot. They got him up talking for a little bit. They asked him, who shot you? And he said, I don't know. They didn't get my name until he died. Damn. So how long did it take you to find that out? 
I didn't find out until I got like a rain where they told me. But what they don't know is, I mean, they do know this now after trial and shit, but I doubled back. After I got rid of the gun, across, okay, so this Wendy's is in a shopping plaza. Yeah. But right across the street is this big ass church. I needed to know what the fuck was going on. So once I got rid of the gun, I took back ways, went across the street, down a ways, went over this way, and then back into the church parking lot. So I'm parked right across the street from all the cops, the ambulance. They have no, they did not see me, not once. But so I you're, saw, you're peeping everything they're doing to see. Yeah, bro, that that's ballsy right there too, bro. I know, but I, 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 it was my boy. I'm more like, yeah, you were worried about what's up, what's going on, with my homeboy. With him, and, and, and I know it sounds fucked up because of what I did, but I own some real shit. That's, I didn't want him to die. I was Damn. mad as fuck that he had me do that shit because he was one of the few people that knew. I was getting into that type of shit and I was getting more like, aggressive just because yeah. I, I So how long did it take before they bring you in and arraign you? So the police raided my dad's bar. My dad owns a bar. They raid his bar and our family attorney He's in the bar. It's March Madness, college basketball going on at the time. And uh, our Lord, he's cool with my with my dad, with my pops and shit. He was in there, so he knows right away when the police realize that I'm not there and leave, they called me. And what the fuck did you do? Damn, bro. And I'm like, damn, they know already. And I... At the, I'm flying to my mom's. After I realize I'm in some shit, I'm like, I, I got to tell my mom before anyone else does. Yeah. But me and my mom are like this. So I'm flying there. But by the time I got there, I was already on the fucking news. Like they interrupted all the local channels and they was making me seem like, like I was on like some rampage weird shit. Yeah, like America's Most Wanted type shit. Yeah, I mean, I know how it seems, but, like, you could tell, like, they just trying to get a fucking story. Like, that ain't even how it went down. Yeah, but, I talk about that on this channel, bro. Like, the news and the media, even the cops, the detectives, bro, like, they turn something like your story into this guy pulled up at Wendy, started shooting at everybody, shot this guy, killed him, left the scene. Now he might go murder someone else. And I went, I went all the way to trial with my shit. But so how I long did you? In. Listen, I turned myself in that night. Oh, my all lawyer, right. My lawyer, my lawyer called the fella. He, he like, tell me everything that happened right now, exactly how it happened. And don't fucking lie. So I'm like, all right. So I break everything down to him. And this is a private attorney or a public yeah. defender? No, private attorney. All right. Okay. So you got a chance. <laughs> this is the only lawyer I use. This is the only lawyer anyone in my family uses. Out my way, if you catch a homicide, you want you want my lawyer. Yeah, he's a, he's if you got a big a beast. drug case, a serious drug case. You want my lawyer, like he's the best in our area. Yeah, best best thing swinging. So what what did you end up getting for like the murder? Like, did they charge you with what second degree murder or manslaughter? They in Pennsylvania, if it's like a gang situation, a drug situation, and you kill somebody, it's called criminal homicide. All right. We're that gives the DA a way to be able to charge you anywhere from first to third. But were you in court? Were they affiliating you with a gang at this point? Nope. Okay. So Just they as someone who gets into shit all the time and 
we'll, we'll do robberies, we'll deal drugs. Yeah, we'll they made that. you out to be a criminal career. Yes, like yeah. a, a, a menace kid. Yeah, like, that's what you, they do. If you, if you Google my shit and read what the DA was saying about me, like it was fucked up, bro. Because I'm not that type of, like, I was getting shit to get money and I never did anything to anyone that ain't signed up for this type of life. Right. Like, I never did anything to anyone innocent. Right? I don't even respect that shit. Yeah, that's like, I've, they've done that to me, bro, in the papers. They make you out to be this, like, savage that's a menace to society and don't give a fuck about nobody and will rob a little old lady. Yeah, and I, bro, I despise that shit. Yeah, I facts, despise. bro. So when you went to trial, how long did you end up getting and what charges did they actually charge you with? So I got hit with criminal homicide, aggravated assault, illegal firearms possession, and uh, counts of reckless endangerment for shooting a gun in a Wendy's parking lot. Oh, man. Yeah, down here they call that uh, shooting in an occupied dwelling. Occupied structure, right? Or dwelling, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you took it to trial, and I'm yeah, assuming... they were you... offering me crazy numbers. They Whoa. were offering 20s to 40s, Damn. Uh, 15 to 30. Like, if I had a legal gun, like, that'd be self-defense. I was just too young to possess a gun, like, legally have a gun because i was 19 yeah in florida they have that stand your ground law so i don't know if they have that up in pa but pa they have self-defense but it's so fucking hard to get it you're you're yeah. and i went all the way to trial i ended up getting found guilty of manslaughter involuntary manslaughter all right the da well fucked themselves over at trial because my lawyer caught three fake witnesses two people that were saying they were witnesses were never there and one dude was somebody i grew up with and he got caught with a gun and he was like i i can't say like my my the aliquippa police department where this case out they crooked as fuck like real crooked yeah bro it's almost at the point every police department's crooked you know what on some real shit i was learning that in prison when i was meeting people from different states yeah you think it's always just like right when you find out that it's everywhere the world seemed pretty fucked up yeah bro it's all <laughs> corrupt man we live in a corrupt society so when you were at trial and you you lost the trial i'm taking it how long did they end up giving you for everything that we, you just talked about? Five to 11 years. All right, man. So this guy's got a pretty crazy story. And, you know, he got, you know, five to 11 years in prison. And uh, that's a long time to be in prison. And you're going to experience some shit in that time. So we're going to bring him on for part two. So he's going to share his whole experience, everything he went through, being a white boy in prison in pa we're going to hear about how the politics work how the gangs work all that so if you haven't man hit that subscribe button and make sure your uh, post notifications are on all so every time we drop an episode you can hear it first and with that it's doc tv and we're out